What is up, my peoples? This is LarkNuck1 slash AKW Addict, and today I'm bringing you guys a 22 kills and 7 deaths match on Crash Site against some better players today, so you guys can't accuse me of just playing noobs. Um, among the other team is Krish, one of my fellow C2 players. This is a shout out to Krish for being that awesome and stuff. So yeah, guys, um, let's get into it t for today. Um, my topic for today's discussion is going to be about potential future game patches to Gone to If you have any ideas or would like to share, go ahead and comment below, and I'll try to get back to you. First things first, guys, as far as weapons go, there are a few suggestions I'd like to make to High Voltage Studios. Um, the first is being that the SMA has got to change. Currently, if you go online in Conduit 2, you'll run into a multitude of noob ass SMA spamming ass wipes. And if it's not hard, if it's n it's not a hard weapon to succeed with at all. Um, if you use a SMA class regularly, you're probably not enjoying the game anyways, and you're certainly not making the game more fun for other people. So the way I see it, there are three ways this can go. Number one, you stop being a complete idiot and put down the high explosives. Thank you. If you still like explosives, you should try out the TPC launcher. Still deadly, just takes a little more skill to use effectively. It's also great for team play, and friends will always appreciate it when you cover the rear with a mine or two. Number two, if you're not enjoying the game, you already tried number one. Simple answer, people. Don't play games you don't like to play. Number three, High Voltage Studios patches the game in one of the following ways. One, they can increase the reload time by a second or two. Surprisingly, this should help balance the gun out a bit. Alternatively, it can make it impossible to jump like a retard while reloading a heavy weapon. Two, they can decrease the explosion radius of the weapon by a bit. I'm tired of idiots who don't need to aim, blowing my face off by shooting a rocket in my general vicinity. They can increase the, in well, three, they can increase the inaccuracy of firing the small without scoping to the point where it's unreliable. I'd like to know that when I do get killed by the small, the user at least had the balls to aim down the sight and shoot a well-placed rocket in my direction. The second gun we're going to talk about today is none other than the SCAR. My main issue with this gun is that it's slightly too powerful and slightly too easy to use. Everyone knows this is the go-to gun to pwn people with and get yourself that reign of terror. I'd like that to change. Um, instead of a five-shot body kill with ballistics focus and ballistics improvement on, to an unarmored target that is, I'd rather it be six shots. Um, you'd actually be amazed by how much this small change would help balance out the game. Alternatively, HVS could increase the inaccuracy of spraying the gun just a little bit, because with a 20 bullet clip and only having to place five into your target, you only need 25% of your shots to register. It's kind of overpowered is what I'm saying. On the other side of things, some guns need to be buffed or changed. Um, one gun in specific is the strike rifle. See, my main issue with this gun is that it doesn't matter how good you are with it, you would be two times better with the phase rifle. That's hard fact. Why? Because the gun doesn't stack up at all at close range with guns like the Spaz and the Scar, while a wave of good luck with the phase rifle can get you a couple kills, no scoping up close. At medium range, the gun does its best. That being said, having to hit your targets twice instead of once means you need to be as twice as quick and twice as accurate as the phase rifling enemy to come out on top without getting hit. At long range, there's no comparison. The phase rifle will dominate every single time. Why? Because if you want a one-hit kill with a strike rifle, you're gonna have to charge it. If you're charging it, you're slow as balls. Also, you can't look through walls with the strike rifle. What I think should be done about that, the strike rifle, um, is not so much a buff as it is, um, is it's already a strong weapon. Um, but it's, I'm thinking about a reclassification. If I was in charge of patching this system for HVS, here's what I would do with the strike rifle. Firstly, I would double the gun's rate of fire. This would make the gun way more user friendly. It would also change the way you use it from a poor man's phase rifle to a rich man's scar ACOG. Secondly, this would be a little overpowered now with this um, double rate of fire. So I would add one more shot required to kill, bringing it to three shots in the body with energy focus and energy improvement on to unarmored targets. I would then increase the clip size to 12 and give the gun to six to eight more shots when you spawn, which is two shots per clip additional that you get. You know what I mean. Like, uh, let's say you get no three clips normally with the strike rifle, or four, I don't recall which one it is. Um, and it's ten shots per clip, so you're either getting 30 or 40 shots. Instead, I would give you two more for each clip, so like... 36 or 48, something like that. Um, 
if all of this is done to the strike rifle, hopefully the strike rifle is now a fun weapon to use and it's no longer a poor man's phase rifle. But again, most comparable to perhaps the M14 from Black Ops. A fun rifle to use that maintains a high rate of fire. As far as perk balance goes, I'd like to see the introduction of a secondary C perk that protects you from being flashed. Or alternatively, add that functionality to the current existing helmet perk, um, where there is still little incentive to use it. I would also like to see a boost for the field medicine perk, again, um, one possible change could be to give the user of the field medicine perk an additional clip of ammo for every person they revive. This would actually give people some incentive to focus on reviving teammates to become a strong part of who wins battles in uh, clan battles or just normal big team games. I'd also like to see ammo salvage debuffed, um, less ammo per kill, and made into a secondary perk. Because as it stands at the moment, there's absolutely no incentive to pick Ammo Savage out of the several much better primary perks. Um, what I mean is, the guns that people run out of ammo for, it's because nobody else is using them, and they didn't manage to pick up any ammo while killing people. The guns that people don't use very much are the weaker guns, um, i.e. the guns you don't need, you need a damage primary perk um, on to succeed with. And that's the contradiction of using ammo salvage at the moment. If you choose it, you're doing so because your gun is rare and nobody is using it very much. Or alternatively, the people you are who are using it, you manage to kill from a distance and can't get over in time to pick up the ammo. For example, I'm always running out of phaser rifle ammo. However, if you choose ammo salvage, your gun is weak, therefore needs a primary perk. Phaser rifle specialization for the phaser rifle, energy focus for the strike rifle, explosive focus for the TPC launcher. In fact, the only weapon ammo salvage is doing any Five good for at the remaining. moment is the small, and we already talked about why that gun needs a debuff. Anyways guys, in the last two minutes of the video today, I'd like to talk about um, Lark's files again. Um, it includes all the weapon information and some of what you heard me talk about today. For example, the scar killing in five shots to the body, the strike rifle killing in two shots to the body, all this information, much, 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 much more. In fact, that number is only one out of a 16 chart for each weapon. Um, it's 4x4. Four four. It's combining um, all of the combinations you could with the attack perks, with all the combinations of the possible defense perks. Um, it'll make more sense once you get a copy. Point is, I'm giving away that to every single one of my subscribers that wants it. Once I hit 175 subscribers, and we are so close, I think we're only um, 8 or 9, I think it might be like 8 away at the moment. Um, I'll also be giving away a copy of that with every video um, up until 175 subscribers. And once I do hit that number, um, I will give away a copy of Lark's Files version 2 in every video until I hit like, I don't remember the number, it might have been 250, 225. Um, that includes all the running speed information, so you know exactly how fast you can travel with and without Supercharger. Um, so that's interesting. And um, to win, very simple. Well, to win on a video, and I only choose one person. Um, to win on a video, you just have to leave a comment and be subscribed. It's not that difficult. Um, and uh, a random number generator will choose one person. I will send you a private message asking for your email address. Um, you just send me your email address, and then I will send you a copy of Lark's Files version 1 um, attached to the document. It will be a windows.doc. If you can't open it on your computer, that's fine. You can view it. Um, anyways, guys, um, thanks for watching. Um, leave a comment. Again, um, you have to leave a comment if you want to win. That's how you enter. You also have to be subscribed. Please subscribe, first of all, if you enjoy my videos, you should definitely subscribe just for that reason alone. Um, secondly, once you do subscribe, you get everyone closer to winning Lark's Files version 1. You also get, uh, you might have a chance of winning it early. Um, what else to say? If you like this video a lot, go ahead and favorite it. Um, it shows people that you care, etc. It shows me that you care. Like this video definitely if you liked it. It's one click away. It tells everyone that I'm a boss, um, which I am. Massacre. And um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And peace!